Let's start off today's video by taking a look at plasma metabolites that are associated with future risk for all-cause mortality. And that's what we can see here. So putting up a line at a hazard ratio of zero, to the right of that line would be metabolites associated with an increased risk for all-cause mortality. In other words, higher levels of the metabolite are associated with a higher risk. And to the left of that line would be higher levels of metabolites that are associated with a reduced or decreased risk for all-cause mortality. So let's go through a few examples. To the far right, the metabolite that was associated with highest risk in terms of all-cause mortality is cotinine or cotinine, however you might say it. This is a marker of tobacco use and it's elevated in smokers. Also in the higher risk group is methionine sulfoxide, which I covered in an earlier video as a marker of oxidative stress. And last but not least, as I don't wanna go through all of these metabolites, just a few examples, is the amino acid glutamate. So relatively higher levels of glutamate are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So the question is why? As we'll see in a minute, high levels of glutamate could be a marker of low NAD. All right, let's take a look at metabolites that are associated with reduced risk. So first, at the far left, that the metabolite that's associated with maximally reduced risk for all-cause mortality, at least in this study, is beta-carotene, which is abundant in carrots and greens. Also, ergothionine, which is found in mushrooms, but that could be a gut microbiome story, and I may have more on that in a future video. And then last but not least, again, I don't want to go through them all, just a few examples, the amino acid histidine. So higher levels of histidine are associated with a reduced all-cause mortality risk. So what's the importance of histidine? Is there a connection between histidine and glutamate? So let's get into that story. So here we can see the citric acid cycle, or TCA cycle, and then what I'd like to point out is during aging, there is likely a block at isocitrate dehydrogenase, otherwise known as IDH. And that's because metabolites that are upstream of IDH, including isocitrate, cis, aconitate, and citrate, increase during aging. And that's what we can see here. So on the left, we've got levels, and these are relative levels. So this was an untargeted metabolomic analysis, so the actual values weren't quantified. It's a relative expression. So on the left, we've got levels of these three metabolites in 67-year-olds, 97-year-olds, the full change comparing the two groups, and then whether the differences were statistically significant using the p-value and FDR or false discovery rate. So having values p-value and FDR less than 0.05 would be a statistically significant association. So for citrate, aconitate, and isocitrate, we can see that they're each higher in the 97-year-olds plasma levels uh, when compared with the 67-year-olds. And in terms of full change, 39% to 49% higher in the 97-year-olds when compared with the younger group, and these differences were statistically significant. So that's the first line of evidence that there may be a block in the isocitrate dehydrogenase, but the question is why? Well, notice that to convert isocitrate into 2-oxoglutarate, otherwise known as alpha-ketoglutarate, you need NAD. The age-related decline for NAD is well known, so if you don't have enough NAD, the efficiency of the reaction to convert isocitrate into alpha-ketoglutarate may be poor, leading to an accumulation of isocitrate and some of its upstream metabolites like aconitate and citrate. So is an age-related NAD decline impacting these metabolites? So let's take a, little, uh, a look at a little bit more evidence in support of that hypothesis. So for that, let's go outside of the TCA cycle just by a bit and take a look at pyruvate levels, which increase, also increase during aging. And that's what we can see here. So looking at data first for the 97-year-olds, 1.12, versus the 67-year-olds, 0.99, 13% higher levels of circulating levels of pyruvate in the 97-year-olds and significantly higher. So okay, why is pyruvate higher? Why does it increase during aging? Well, note that to convert pyruvate into acetyl-CoA, you need pyruvate dehydrogenase. And guess what's a cofactor for pyruvate dehydrogenase? NAD. So if NAD levels are low, the efficiency of the conversion of pyruvate into acetyl-CoA will be suboptimal or poor, potentially leading to an accumulation of pyruvate during aging. So that's the second line of evidence that may uh, indicate low NAD by, use, by taking a look at these metabolites or plasma levels of these metabolites. Now, fortunately, things like the amino acid glutamate can help or at least try to help get around a potential age-related block for isocitrate dehydrogenase and that's because glutamate can be converted into 2-oxoglutarate. And if that's the case, we bypass that block at isocitrate dehydrogenase, the citric acid cycle continues. And that happens with this reaction here. So glutamic acid, otherwise known as glutamate, 
is converted with the action of the enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase into alpha ketoglutarate, again, also known as 2-oxoglutarate. But again, note what we need for this reaction to happen as a required cofactor, NAD. So if NAD is low, we'd expect an accumulation of glutamate during aging, and that's exactly what we see. So glutamate levels in the 97-year-olds, 1.08, in the 67-year-olds, 0.98, 9% higher in the 97-year-olds, and significantly higher. So now we've got three lines of evidence that suggest low NAD using metabolite data. So glutamate levels increase during aging, as I just showed. So what does this have to do with histidine? Well, there are four amino acids that can be converted into glutamate to try to help get around this potential age-related block in the TCA cycle. And maybe there are multiple blocks, but there's at least one. And those four amino acids are arg, arginine, GLN, or glutamine, pro, or pro proline, and his or histidine. Histidine levels decline during aging, and that's what we can see here. So starting with the 97-year-olds, 0.93, 1.02 in the 67-year-olds, 9% lower in the oldest group, and significantly lower. So why would that be the case? Well, if histidine is, uh, if NAD levels are relatively low, there may be an increased degradation of histidine into glutamate to try to get around that age-related block because of the low NAD levels. Conversely, if NAD levels are high, we'd expect to see high histidine, which, as, as I just showed, was also associated with a reduction for all-cause mortality risk. So high NAD, potentially high histidine, because you wouldn't need to convert it into glutamate to try to get around an age-related block because of low NAD. So with that in mind, low histidine could be a marker of not only low NAD, but also TCA cycle dysfunction. Now, we don't have to sit idly by we can track and potentially optimize levels of these metabolites during aging. And that's with using metab uh, Iolo's at-home metabolomics kit. And if you're familiar with the channel, you've seen me use this kit for many uh, metabolites already. I won't go through them all, but if you're interested in any of these metabolites in terms of age-related changes and what may be optimal, just do a search on the channel and they will come up. Now, this kit is a goldmine of information. It includes more than 500 metabolites. I still have two more videos planned uh, for acyl carnitines as a marker of mitochondrial function and uh, kidney function biomarkers. So if you're interested in using the kit, discount link in the video's description. So as I mentioned, we can track and optimize at least three of the met metabolites that I showed, histidine, glutamate, and aconitate with Iolo's kit. So I, ha I currently have data for two tests in April and in May of 2023, and I have data for a third test that I'm waiting on. More on that in a minute. So first, looking at histidine, you can see that they're relatively close, 76.5 and around 79 micromolar. So that's good. Uh, test to test, uh, variability is low, and my diet is remarkably consistent. So that's what I would expect. I would expect minimal changes for some of these metabolites as the diet is pretty consistent from test to test. Now, remember, for histidine, the goal is to avoid an age-related decrease. So far, so good, but there's more to the story, so stay tuned in a second. Similarly for glutamate, in the same ballpark, 128 versus 119 uh, micromolar. And then for aconitate, again, also relatively close values, test over test. Now for the other three metabolites, citrate, isocitrate, and pyruvate, they're not yet in this kit, but I've been informed by, uh, by Iolo that they should be coming later this year. Now for the five metabolites that are not histidine, the goal is to avoid an age-related increase, which potentially could be indicative of low NAD. Now, if I increase NAD, will these metabolites then move towards youthful levels? And that would uh, probably you know, directly address that hypothesis that low NAD is contributing to levels of these metabolites in blood. Now, for my third Iolo test, which again, I, I sent in late July, my NAD levels, I also sent NAD for analysis on that day, was two fold, about twofold higher than my baseline. My baseline is about 25 micromolar without any supplements. For that test, it was about 59 micromolar as uh, I was supplementing with niacin and tryptophan. So NAD was higher. Did levels of these metabolite metabolites that may be affected by NAD levels, did they change? So stay tuned for that video. As soon as I get it from Iolo, I'm going to obviously put it in a video and show it to everyone. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NAD quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, also telomere testing using true, true, diagnos sorry, true diagnostic, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health. And note that their panel is almost exclusively different from Iolo, including ApoB, 
diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Tracking brand, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.